Question for you. If I told you that somebody called me recently and said that their wife had thrown our book across the room, what would you say? I would say fantastic. There's a reaction to what happened, right? There's something going on internally that makes you throw the book across the room. Well, it's called something to the forefront that needs to be healed, right? Right. And so today we're going to talk about how that reaction is actually important because we can't find a healing until something has been uncovered. Hi, this is Phil and Priscilla Fretwell here with Savage Marriage. We're going to talk about how God is healing and restoring marriages today from betrayal, addictions, and the wounds of their past. And what he did in our marriage, he can do in yours too. The other day, Priscilla, I got a message from one of our small group leaders, and he said that one of the couples in his group had told him that his wife and him were reading our book, Savage Marriage, and she threw our book across the room. Well, that sounds very familiar, right? It did. (laughs) We've heard that before. We have. We've even had uh, friends not read our book because they got into it and said, you know, I just can't read it. Yeah. I get too angry. Well, and someone will say, so why did you write a book that was so hard to read and triggering. And it was intended to be that way, right? It was intended to present a situation which calls us to a place where we start seeing there is something going on inside of us that needs to be addressed, you know? And this happened to you early in our in our recovery, right? It did. What what happened? Take us back well, there. I had just finished coming from Four Days to Hope and you had gone to Four Days to Freedom and you came back with some books. Yeah. And uh, I started reading them. Well, I was trying to help you. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I started reading these books. I was trying to help me, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what it was. Get, yeah. Getting out of your mess. But mm-hmm. I started reading them and I just got so angry reading story after story and my anger just rose up. Mm. And I just threw that book across the room and I said, I don't have five and a half years to be well. Mm. I need to be well right now. Mm. Yeah. Because if if it's going to take five and a half years, we might as well not just be together. You know, that was what was going on inside my head. So when you look back on that, I mean, why is it good? And we think it's good yeah. that a book will em- evoke this type of emotional and even physical response for throwing it across the room. Because it happened with you with that book. Right. But we've heard a number of stories where our book also brings out this strong emotional and sometimes a response of throwing it across the room. Why why is that good? Well, it's a signal, right? It's a signal inside that's telling us there is something that has not been dealt with. Yeah. You know, because I I think our book is great in the sense that it goes through the mess, but then there's the, the also what God did. Yeah. How he came in. So it's a, it's a great ending. I believe it's a place of recognizing the signal yeah. of what is happening in you and in your marriage. Yeah. We, we've had some couples that would say, listen, we had to put it down because I just couldn't have her go through that. Yeah. That's another one they've said. Yeah. Right. I, I don't want and I don't want to see my wife triggered that way. Yeah. And it's like, why not? Yeah. It, I mean, it's it's a it's a painful place to be, right? But at the same time, you do want to press into that. We will tell them many times, especially for a guy, and say, listen, the anger in the response that you're seeing is exactly what you need to see. Because many times as guys, you know, I don't think I understood really what was going on inside of you. And Priscilla, if we back it back up till 10 years into our marriage, when you caught me looking at porn and we kind of pushed it under the rug and shoveled it, you know, you had some emotion in there but I was kind of under the thought, if if we can just kind of get through this, I'll go to counseling, her anger will subside, and we'll just kind of get through this with some time. That was my general thought. And because I, I didn't really want to experience your anger going through that. With hindsight, you can see that me not coming out and processing what was going on inside of me, the anger that I felt towards you, mm-hmm. and not even processing it, really. We just kind of put it under the rug and said, no one needs to know about this except the counselor. Yeah. And I had no way of processing that. It was 17 years of anger and unforgiveness towards you. Yeah. That's a long time to hold that in. And our kids and you will say that I was just waiting to be exposed. Uh, Erupt. (laughs) Right. Because it just never got processed. Right. 
Well, I think what happens is when you see something like this, you start to understand that there is something under inside that needs to get addressed. And when we come out and say, wait, we're going to avoid all the pain. We're not going to go through the place where these strong emotions get exposed and they come out. It's really trying to put you in a place where you are non-expressive. And we've seen a lot of situations, primarily women, that they will get uh, to us and they have been very shut down. They won't express and we even have to start asking him, have you ever shown him your anger? Has he, does he really know what's gone on inside of you? I see it in myself, the 17 years of not processing it. Hmm. And not really at the end of 17 years, I didn't have any feelings at all. Yeah. It just so is pushed so far down. So far down that I remember of when we when we started walking through this and having an emotional word list was great. Like the feelings wheel. The feelings wheel. Like I can, I'm going to put some feelings to this mm -hmm. because I need to stop and think, well, how has this made me feel? I never had that before. Yeah. All I could say is that I'm pissed off. I'm angry at you. I don't want to see your face. Like that doesn't say anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and so for me to be able to share my feelings with you, I started to, you know, uncover this is what's happening to me. Right. This is how I have felt for 17 years. Yeah. You know, this is what this sin has caused in my life. My own sin, too. Yeah. Not just yours. Well, sometimes it's the guy, right? The guy has confessed. He's done everything he can do. His wife has said, I forgive you. And then all of a sudden she's triggered again in something, right? And the guy says, listen, you got to get over this. I can't do any more for you. And so there's this pressure to push all the emotion down, to put all the questions away and never go back and really be open about it. Well, and, it's, it's a bearing, right? You're bearing yourself to that person. Yeah. This is how it has affected me and that this is the pain inside of my soul. Yeah. So we tell people, you know, you've got to process this. This is part, uh, you can't live in denial. So in the stages of grief, denial is the first stage, and right? I lived in that for 17 years. Yeah, without ever really getting through it, Never right? Never getting through it and just like bearing it. And actually, you know what? I probably could have gone another 30 years like that. Yeah. But our marriage would have been really lifeless like it was. I yeah. mean, we look back at that time and we go, that's a mediocre marriage if there ever was one. Yeah. You know, nothing's happening. We're just surviving. Well, the other thing from a guy standpoint is they can get to this conclusion that, well, I guess what I did didn't hurt her that much. I mean, she seems to have processed it reasonably well. She's not angry anymore. Doesn't have any more questions for me. I mean, I think that's where we were in the 17 years. I was angry. You saw that. Yeah. But I never brought up what you did. Mm-hmm. It was just not brought up. I thought really your counselor was going to take care of it. I yeah. believed him. Mm -hmm. He had to take care of this. Yeah. He had to fix this mess. Yeah. And it didn't get fixed. Yeah. So, and know. by the way, I should say not my counselor's fault. No. You know, it, it he, was, he was, might listen to this sometimes <laughs> and you know who you are. I just want to tell you, brother, you have been a lifeline for me over all these years. You stayed in touch with me and uh, I really appreciate that. And even staying in touch with me now and listening to our journey, very different than what you have anticipated, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but and, it really does come back to you. You weren't totally honest. I, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> but because I'm not, I don't, I wasn't even processing my own stuff, right? Yeah. Very well. But we are in this thing of we're going to bury all this emotion, we're going to bury the reaction. And so when people say, she threw your book across the room. I'm saying at least it's coming out, right? <laughs> something is being displayed. Something is being displayed. I mean, for a something, for a book to be remembered, it's got to evoke a strong emotional response. If you can think about all the sermons and all the books you've read that are intellectually based or theologically based, how many do you really remember? It's not very many, Right. But if you think about the things that you actually remember, many times they are built around a story where there's been a strong emotional component to it. And from a spiritual standpoint, it's linked back to here's what God did in our life. Now, something like that can stay with you. And so we endeavored to write a book that was like that. And so when we hear people say this, you know, 
Uh, a wife can't read it. A husband can't read it. It's too much. It's too triggering. It's we we say, hey, at least we're getting somewhere in this, because what we're what we're talking about is something that can't be ignored, right? We didn't want to create a book that could be ignored, and so I think that's where we are. So the person who is demonstrating anger has a strong emotional and physical response towards reading the book. So what is it going to take to get to the spiritual part? Ah, yes. How do we get to the spiritual response? Because we've had the emotional and the physical, but what it's really showing is there is something else going on, and we how do we press into that? And so what we have to do is really start addressing the, the barriers. And I think one big barrier is, is shame. Yeah, but I mean, both of us in our relationship had shame. You were the first to come out and say, this is where I have had shame in my life and mm -hmm. fear. And then after that, it was like, oh, well, I guess I should talk too. <laughs> yeah. I should confess what's going, what has been going on in my life. Yeah. So it's kind of like if when we both share where we're coming from and it's a safe place to do that, right? And we become vulnerable in wanting to share, I think then we can lead into the spiritual side of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the shame will cause us to hide. It's what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve, right? Yeah. The shame of what's happened causes you to hide. And so- We've seen this in situations. The offended spouse actually has something also in their past. Yeah. I mean, we all have something, right? I mean, all of us are sexually broken here. Yeah. It's not like we're, you know, as white as the driven snow. No, I don't think so. And so when these emotions come out, instead of pressing into it and saying, let me let me see what God has for in this, there is a running away from that, right? Yeah. There's a running towards isolation. So we would say, hey, you got to do a self, -eva a real strong self-evaluation on where you are. What is it that is creating all these triggers and these shames? The other thing we'd say to get to the spiritual response is you have to go back to God and say, God, what is it inside of me that's causing this? Where am I? And ask God, I want to get to a place of revealing and sharing, a place of real intimacy in this. And that will start getting us to the place of uh, more of a spiritual response. We also found that when we started to share with each other our pains, our shame, our fears, mm -hmm. that we had to go to the Lord and pray and be ready to receive what that person had to say. When we didn't do that, there were a few blow-ups. Yeah. And, uh, and so we're kind of like, okay, let's learn from our mistakes and not do that again. So I think coming before the Lord and really wanting to have an open mind, heart to receive what the person is saying, what your spouse is saying is mm -hmm. important. Yeah, it really is. And it starts getting to the spiritual response rather than just the emotional and the physical. A lot of times we'll say we have to learn to respond and not just react. And many times the reaction comes out in emotions and physical responses, right? But a response can be one that comes out in the spiritual response into situations. And that, that doesn't mean that you don't get angry, right? Expressing your anger and letting them know what's going on inside of you and how much pain there was that what's created. I mean, from a guy's standpoint, I needed to see that inside of you. It's been a good deterrent for me to let, to, to let me see that that is not what I want to have happening to you. And so it keeps me away from those things. It helps keep me away from those things that created that response. So how do you think a book like ours is used in a journey of intimacy with, our, with each other? Well, it starts breaking down some, some barriers. You know, it starts saying, hey, we have to have a place to process the emotion. We have to have a bright place to process um, what's going on between us. And it starts putting your finger on it. Yeah, I like what you said earlier today when we were looking at this podcast. I said, people need to see themselves in the middle of our story. And you said... That they really need to see God in it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you see our story and it's fine, but seeing what God did with the story, that's where the miracle is. Yeah. That is where God came in and redeemed and restored, not giving us back the marriage that we had. Thank yeah. God he didn't give that back. No, he made something new. Something brand new. Something brand new and different. And I, I give him all the glory for that. Amen. So if somebody's out there listening to this, Priscilla, and they have been one of the people that threw our book across the room, or they ordered it and they got it and they said, this is too much for us to process, what would you say to somebody like that? I perfectly understand that. This is a hard book to read. It's a hard book to even see yourself in the pain that you're going through. But, you know, I, 
I see in my own life that I was in such a mode of preservation, preserve Priscilla, just keep her safe Mm -hmm. and make it sure that nothing bad happens to Priscilla. Mm -hmm. That when something did happen and everything was destroyed and everything was in shambles in my life, Mm -hmm. the only thing I could do is I didn't have anything of myself anymore. Mm -hmm. And I only had Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have to run to the pain and we have to display this pain before the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. He knows very well how much we have been in pain. Yeah. All of our life has been a painful experience, right? Mm-hmm. Ups and downs all around. Yeah. But he understands that pain mm-hmm. and he just wants us to present it to him and say, do something with my life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I it's just we you know, it's so funny because um I have two granddaughters and my daughter always says, I want my girls to know how to deal with disappointment. Hmm. And I think that as parents, sometimes we don't even want our children to know how to deal with disappointment. And I know as a mom, I protected my kids from everything I could. I wanted everything to be perfect, nothing to be out of line. And life is just going to be hunky-dory here, Mm -hmm. you know? And that isn't really how life is. No. I believe that um, my daughter has it right. Mm. Learn... To live with disappointments in this world, in this life, and trust the Lord Jesus with everything. This is Phil and Priscilla Fretwell. Thanks for listening. Our book, Savage Marriage, Triumph Over Betrayal and Sexual Addiction, is now available on Amazon. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Savage Marriage Ministries. Also, Join our Savage Marriage community at SavageMarriageMinistries.com. And remember, it's God who is at work in your savage adventure.